I'm going to start in tongues, and I believe that I am going to laugh about all of these problems, and I want, I want all the musicians, Robin and Robin and, and their, their family, uh, to enter in. I want everyone viewing us right now to enter in because we are at our Red Sea, and but... God, I want you to know I'm not making that laughter up. Imagine if a million Christians were laughing at the devil right now. Yeah, ha ha. Devil won't know which way to go. On your ha 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 ha. Whoa ho 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 ha 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 ha. Whoa yeah 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 yeah. Ha 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 
this kind of craziness that's going on in the evangelical world and throughout Christianity, uh, then of course, you know, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking to you. But if you're someone who is wrapped up in this kind of thing or is showing some interest in it, thinking, hey, maybe this is what God is doing in this day and age, I would venture to say that uh, maybe rethink that. Because let's face it, folks, what we heard at the beginning of this podcast is disturbing, and it's disturbing to watch in video format as well. And you can find videos of Sid Roth engaging in speaking in tongues and the holy laughter, as uh, many call it. And he says, I want you to know I'm not making this laughter up, but it's very obviously made up. I mean, you... You can just listen to it and know this is not God or the Spirit of God laughing through one of his prophets or uh, disciples. Th this is a sham. And that's why I've called this podcast Sid Roth. Is that supernatural? Is this the kind of supernatural that you're promoting? Now, there were times that I would watch on YouTube Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, every once in a while. And, you know, some of the guests on there uh, were definitely uh, kind of shady. Even though Sid Roth says that he screens his guests very carefully and no one but the best of the best uh, comes on his show. I've seen people on there that you know, had an interesting story to tell. And I've seen others that just in my spirit, in my heart, my intuition, I sat there shaking my head going, this person is lying. This person is just making this up to try to grab a piece of the evangelical limelight, to try to sell a book, to try to get people to come to their meetings, to their ministry. And you can tell that uh, pretty readily when you're aware of how uh, some of these people operate. But I will tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, after this fiasco, for me, I will never darken the door of that show again. You know, I give people the benefit of the doubt. I never really know who knew who Sid Roth was until... Geez, probably uh, five or six years ago. I knew he came from the evangelical background. I didn't agree with all of the guests that he had on. But I thought, you know, this, this is an interesting idea for a Christian show. Because where he's, he's putting people on there talking about different spiritual experiences and encounters. The supernatural that everyone, uh, you know, seems to be interested in. So this this is a good, uh, I think, a good idea to educate people, to let them know that there are bigger forces out there in the universe, and they are aware of us in our lives. But, you know, it's suddenly, I, I didn't watch it as much because it got too much into people that were having the dreams and the visions and always seeing the end of the world in New York City underwater and, you know, earthquakes wiping out the entire West Coast and things that never happened. You know, one, once you've heard that kind of thing, once you've heard it, once you, you've heard it all. And they were the same prophecies. I remember these are the same prophecies that were sensationalized coming from people back in the early mid nineties. Even if I had a dollar for every prophet that I saw on TV or ran across in my life in a church or book that I read that said, uh, New York city was devastated by an earthquake. You know, all the buildings were rubble on the ground. There was chaos in the streets, dead people everywhere by the end of 1998, 1995, 2000. If I had a dollar for every time I heard that, well, I'd have a few bucks. I'd, I'd at least be able to eat out for a week or two. <laughs> so I was never a fan of that kind of thing after leaving evangelicalism. But I try not to judge anybody. 
you know, no matter what the religion is, and, and I've ran into some very level-headed, logical, nice, uh, you know, evangelical people that don't buy into all of this. So, you know, one blanket statement or religion or denomination uh, doesn't define everybody, and I understand that. But by and large, I mean, that there's a lot of crackpot things that have been going on in Christianity stemming from the evangelical movement. And uh, recently what I've been hearing and seeing from people like Sid Roth uh, during the Trump election, the 2020 election, it was enough for me to say there's something wrong with these people. They are obviously not connected with the Spirit of God. They're they're on there with these shows promoting their own agendas and ideas, and that's not a safe place to be, you know. So no, Sid Roth, uh, this is not supernatural. If I may voice a little of my uh, earthly, worldly aggravation at this kind of thing, I will say it's not supernatural, Sid Roth. It's bullshit, because it is. And all of these people, Perry Stone is another one, you know, even after Trump lost the election, Trump was going to get back in power by this date and this date and this date, you know, and now America needs to be awfully careful because, man, we are less than a stone's throw of God's judgment coming upon America because Donald Trump lost and Joe Biden is in the White House. He's out there now talking about tsunamis and earthquakes and all of these disasters that is just going to devastate uh, the country. He's telling, oh, wake up, America. You better, you know, get uh, get in line with, with the truth and what God wants. But in short, what he's telling us is that we need to jump on that Trump train and, uh, you know, I guess run the Democrats out of town with pitchforks and torches and, you know, install our beloved King Trump and everything will be okay because that jackass is going to save us from the wrath of God. I beg to differ. America under Donald Trump looked like it was under siege by <laughs> the devil. Do you realize how many riots and protests and black people being killed and racial crimes division through these psychotic conspiracy theories that were all around Donald Trump and QAnon. You know, America w was in a shamble. And look how many people died of coronavirus and we still have people saying, oh, it's just a cold. And yet, during all of this horribleness, the evangelicals, people like Sid Roth, people like Perry Stone, people like Kenneth Copeland, and many other evangelical ministers that I don't even know their names, but I've seen them uh, on YouTube talking about it, everything was wonderful. America was getting back to being God's country. This was the best America has had it for so many decades. We're getting back to God. Isn't this wonderful? Did these pinheads for a minute take a moment to look out of their window and see the shape that this country was in? And I suppose even if they did... If Donald Trump incited something, you know, Proud Boys, riots, you know, uh, people coming out of the closet with their uh, their uh, white supremacy, killing, you know, people in the black community all over the place. If, if that happened, well, that wasn't Donald Trump. That was Antifa masquerading as Trump followers. Talk about a strong delusion to believe a lie. These people have said and will say anything to defend their broken, dark, evil, 
misguided religious and political intentions. And if it was anybody else that made a prophecy that failed, these evangelicals would be all over them like flies on cow dung. Oh, you know, quoting, what is it? I think it's Isaiah. I'm not sure which uh, Old Testament book it's from that says, you know, if a prophet uh, makes a statement, makes a prophecy, and it doesn't happen, you shall not fear that prophet because what they have uttered is not from the Lord. You know, the Old Testament talks about the false prophets who always utter, you know, thus saith the Lord, and they utter their false prophecies. These people would be all over anybody that uttered a false prophecy if they were against them. But if they do it, well, all they will do is make excuses. That doesn't mean I'm a false prophet. It just means my timeline was wrong. God's going to do this in the future. We don't know when. But he's going to have his say in his way. The prophecy wasn't wrong. Some of them are downright angry, nasty, insulting, saying people are accusing me of being a false prophet, but you know, you lousy scoundrels, you lost blind Pharisees, you know, here's the excuse why my prophecy failed. So they're not backing down, they're doubling down with their lies and their charade and their false prophecies. And if you're caught up in this movement, and if you think this is still real, and these people are anointed of God, air quotes, and that somehow King Trump is going to be reinstalled into the White House, you need to go back and listen to Sidroth at the beginning of this podcast, and listen with your heart not your indoctrination. And you tell me if that's not the phoniest bunch of crap you ever heard. People that are supposed to be men of God making such complete idiots and asses out of themselves for someone is dishonest and rotten and may I say even evil as Donald Trump. Could you imagine the shape this country would be in with the new variants of the COVID virus that's spreading everywhere if Donald Trump had won the election? God saved our baking, bacon by getting this guy out of there. Could you see him on the news? No, there's no, there's no new variants. Oh, they say it's more deadly, but that's the fake media. They're fake news. You know, he would have all the people. He'd have this whole damn country be nothing but one big graveyard because of his complete ignorance and arrogance. So if you're still on the evangelical Trump train, maybe you better think about that. Get on your knees and thank God that that complete uneducated, unenlightened dimwit is no longer at the helm because God knows what would happen to us all if he were. And I do apologize for throwing around a lot of uh, adjectives <laughs> when I talk about this, but it makes me mad. It makes me mad. There's, there's one thing that I can't, st well, several things I can't stand in life. I never could stand to watch someone or hear of someone physically abusing a woman. If I saw that when I was in my teens, 20s, 30s, you know, I would like intervene. You know, I, I, I was livid. I do not like to see women, children, or animals be abused. It, it just infuriates me. And the next thing that infuriates me is people who take the name of God because I'm a person who believes in God. Not their made up man made God. I believe in a better and a greater God. And when I see people take the name of God and start dragging it through the mud with their false prophecies and their lies and their money grabbing schemes and their political schemes convincing 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of people under their teachings that something bad is good and that the dark is light and the light is dark for their own political gain, for their own religious gain, for their damn dominion of th uh, theology, which is to slowly take over the world with a theocracy through the United States government for Christ and for God. We talked about that in the last show. If you haven't listened to it, please go back and listen to the Anna Kasparian Christianity rant because we cover a lot of stuff about their motives in that show. And you'll understand why this kind of thing, it infuriates me. I can't stand to see it. I can't stand to listen to it. I can't stand that it misleads people. I can't stand that it makes so many people lose their faith over this crock of crap that they're selling. And of course, it makes God look like a fairy tale. It makes God, if he does exist, well, he's a crackpot too because this is... This is what he supports. This is his people. This is his army. These are his followers. These jokers with their, their lies and their nonsense and bah ha ha. I'm not making that up. I mean, come on. Give me a break. Give us all a break. And it all goes back to that old saying that I read many times in my podcasts since the beginning that I started podcasting that quote, and I don't remember who it was from or who said it, but it said, man will never rise higher than his idea or concept of God. And so if we create God in our image, instead of the other way around, then that is the image we will rise to imitate. And unfortunately, we have a lot of Christians, a lot of evangelicals, a lot of fundamentalists who see God as a man on a throne. Always, man has always looked to make God in his image. I'm a man, God is a man. I want power in dominion. Well, God wants me to have power and dominion in his name by subduing the earth, having dominion over the earth. That's where their dominion theology comes from. I hate people that are not the same color as I am. I want to control all the resources. I want to make war and kill to get what I want, money, power, prestige. Well, my God is a man of war. A man of war. Think about that for a minute and just let it sink in. People have made God a man. They want to make God in their image in order that they might continue to live these horrific, dishonest, violent, manipulative, greedy lifestyles, but with God's blessing because their God is just like them. He wants them to be that way. Because, hey, the only thing they're doing is oppressing and killing and taking from all those sinners out there, all those non-believers. And the earth and the fullness thereof and the gold on all the mountains in the world belong to God and God wants his people to have it. It's not theirs anyway, so I will do what I need to do to have dominion. And frankly, I like what the Quran says over and over and over again. And a lot of people don't know this either. It says over and over again, shame on those who write things and present it and say, this is from God. 
Shame on those who speak conjecture about God and say, It is the truth. Shame on those who change or distort the the scriptures and say, This is the truth from our Lord. And then those people persecute and hate and balk at the people who don't believe as they do and buy their lies. It says these people in the end will have a terrible retribution because they speak lies about God. They speak nothing but conjecture. They say they know God or know the ways of God, but they know not. And that God is not a man. God is not something that we can even really wrap our minds around and fully understand in this world and in this life. But we know that he is love. We know that he is good. He is merciful. He is gracious. He loves those who do right. And he guides those who have faith in him. So the Quran warns us over and over again to be careful who we listen to. Be careful who we follow. Whether they be Jewish, whether they be Christian, whether they be Muslim, or whether they be other. Because there are people from all of these faiths to speak conjecture and lies about God, telling us that it is the truth. But they yet they lead us only astray. And those are very wise words. Because look how many people have been led astray by these false prophets, these liars, these people who are profiting on the name of God. Some of them don't believe in God at all. Others are doing just that. They're rewriting the scriptures. They're speaking things about God that are only conjecture. How can it be that Perry Stone will come forward and keep saying that there's all kinds of disasters coming upon the earth because Donald Trump is no longer president? Do you think God is in heaven on his golden throne with his little Burger King crown on his head, as I always call it, the king man, the man of war, pardon my French, all pissed off because Donald Trump lost the election? So he's going to obliterate the entire nation? That sounds like conjecture to me. That sounds like writing down lies and opinions and saying, this is from God. And in fact, I know that's what it is because all of the prophecies that Perry Stone has made in the past, along with all these other people, his predictions, his timelines, have not come to pass. Oh, but they've learned to say, oh, you know, The timeline is up to God. The prophecy's not wrong. Our timeline just might be off. It's a great way to move the goalpost. So the lie and the conjecture is still hanging in the air, fresh as it ever was, scaring those who hear their words into continually to financially support these people. And vote the way they tell them to vote. Running their lives through the TV screen. And they speak conjectures. They speak conjecture and lies about God. And tell us that it is the truth. But theirs will be a painful and sorrowful retribution. Because let me tell you something, folks. God is not the man of whatever they tell us he is. God is not a man. God is so much bigger than what we can understand. 
His thoughts, his ways are so much higher than we can understand. When we can only touch the, the fringe of understanding it through love and kindness and faith and peace and goodness. But yet we only touch the very, the very edge of the robe of the garment of God and our understanding. You know, in the Hebrew and in the Islamic interpretation of God, uh, one of the interpretations could be that God is divine mind. He doesn't have a form. He is literally a universal consciousness from which everything came from. The Quran tells us that God encompasses everything, even the very universe which goes with the biblical narrative, in God we live and move and have our being. He's not a man on a golden throne with a little crown on his head that has some big psychic presence, you know, all over the universe. No, God is that presence. And he can come to us in the form of a man or something else if he so chooses to, but that wouldn't be his true form. And many people have asked in the past, well, what does God have angels for? They are expressions of his love, his mercy, his perfect servants. And the angels are the hands of God, the presence of God that come to help people many times. When they are in trouble and they need help. God's not far away out there somewhere, sitting on his throne. You always hear people, well, we got to storm the gates of heaven with our prayers. No, we don't. He's within us. He's all around us. He encompasses everything. Again, I reiterate, he's not some guy on the golden throne with a little crown and, you know, the spear in his hand saying, you know, go to war, kill in my name. Oh, you thwarted my prophets and didn't vote Donald Trump in. Let there be wrath. You know, that's, that is an ignorant man-made, if I may say so again, bullshit made up version of God. It is not God. And we need to do ourselves a favor and get rid of all that nonsense. And again, I uh, apologize for my adjectives and verbiage, you know, in this show a little bit. But this, uh, like I said, that this is just something that it, it's, you know, I look at it and I say, my God, you know, what are these people doing? And my God, why are so many people believing it? What intelligent, educated, spiritual, reasoning individual could sit there and watch Sid Roth with his ba ha ha, ya 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 ya, and say, This is real? This is the Holy Spirit of God, you know, laughing at the election through Sid Roth? I mean, come on. It's ridiculous. And it's time we all see it for what it is and not give these people any more of our time, our attention, our money. It's time for that movement to fall and crumble like the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because there's nothing there but lust for money, lust for politics, lust for control, lust for dominance, lust for power. And this country and the people in it and the world will be a lot better off when this fake, phony, man-made version of God is no longer the thing we look at, kneel to, or point to as being the truth and the way because it is not. It is a lie and a stumbling block to true religion and spirituality. 
I'm going to leave the subject to lie there. I think I've said enough. I um, I thank you all for listening, and again, I apologize that I get my dander up with this kind of thing, but, you know, I, I just got to be honest and say it. When I see people abusing and making such a mockery of the name and the concept of God, it gets me so angry because, to, to me, it, it's like it, it's like somebody making a mockery out of you know, a good friend or a family member, somebody that you know, and you know that they're not that way. And you got all these knuckleheads going out and convincing other people, you know, that this good person, this moral person, this loving person is some kind of warmongering lunatic. And it it just, it gets me going. It, it really does get me going. So, you know, uh, apologies for any uh, words thrown in there. I tried to uh, restrain myself. I think I did a pretty good job. And, uh, you know, again, I thank everybody for listening. I hope you got something out of this. And I hope you'll think about what we said here today and you'll go back and listen to the last show, the Anna Kasparian's Christian Rant. And really think about these things. Research these things. Look into dominion theology. Educate yourself. And understand if you're following that movement and their version of God, you're following nothing but a man-made lie. And that's the God's honest truth. So listen, everybody. Thank you again for listening. Stay safe. Stay well. And I'll see you next time here on the Mind's Eye Podcast.